His grace watching over us, taking care of us, keeping us. And we're able to be here. You know what? We're blessed that we're yeah. able to be in the house of the Lord. This Amen. Amen. I, I, I feel very blessed that I'm able to be, right. be here tonight. And uh, it's a blessing to see all y'all here tonight. I want to welcome all our visitors and everybody that's. Uh, if you haven't been here before, well, just make yourself at home, kick your shoes off, do whatever you want. Yes, man, that's right. That's what we're supposed to do when we come in the house of the Lord. So praise God. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, have a word of prayer, and then we'll have a song or two and get started. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for the day and the blessings of the day. Just another wonderful day that you've given. And now, God, we pray for ask your blessings on those that are sick and afflicted around us. Those unable to be here tonight, we pray, God, that you might just touch their bodies and heal them and hold them up close to you. We pray for those who don't see the need to get out and come to church this evening. We ask the Lord to convict their hearts, show the need to be in fellowship with you and with other Christians. And most of all, we pray for those that are lost and undone without you tonight. We ask God once again, just continue to be long suffering, convict them, draw them to you, show them the need of a Savior before it's too late. And Lord, we ask you just to fill this house with your spirit tonight, moving about this place, touching the hearts and the lives of each one. We pray, God, that you'll bless during the uh, service this evening. We pray that you bless those that sing, those that uh, play the music, and those that each one that takes a part in the service, bless them in a special way. We pray, God, you'll bless them. We look in your word tonight. Help us to rightly divide your word. We get that from what we're in need of. Might make us to be better Christians. Walk a little closer to you. Be a little more like you. We just want to be like David. Well, I already go ahead and, and thank you, Lord, for yes, what you're going to do because we know you're going to bless. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Church Hamble, for your partner number 44. 44.
about too much going on. Don't forget the sunrise service over Macedonia. Sunrise service at Macedonia at 6.30 next Sunday morning. Uh, Brother Seth Tolliver is supposed to have a message that morning, so look forward to that. That'll be a blessing. We've done that a time or two. They have, uh, they have service at 6.30, and then after the service, they have breakfast. They get together and cook. The ladies get together and cook breakfast, and it's been good every time I've been there. And I'm looking forward to it again. I know it'll be good, good again this time. And I was invited everybody to come and be there with them. So anybody wants to look forward to that, going over and be with them at Macedonia at sunrise service. And then next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month, so we'll have communion next Sunday. And then the next Sunday, next Saturday after that Sunday, will be the time for the men's breakfast again. They roll around really fast. They always have a good time doing that. Look forward to that. I know it'll be a blessing. Uh, uh, we always have good food and good singing and good preaching and good good fellowship. So I know that'll be a blessing. I know it'll be good. This time we're going to preach we, right. <laughs> we not really found out who's going to do the preaching at the men's breakfast this time. So maybe, we'll, maybe we'll, 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 we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll, right. Right. we'll have somebody. We'll have somebody to preach. I guarantee you. So I look forward to that. That'll be a blessing. And I guess that's everything. I forgot anything. If I had forgot anything, stand up take a fall. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention the kids made these in Sunday school this morning. Aren't they a blessing? Look at that. I think that's just, just wonderful. That one, of them, one of them says, uh, Jesus is the true reason we celebrate Easter season. Yeah, and, the other one, and the other one says, let's sing and shout because Jesus is what it's all about. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate the kids doing that in Sunday school this morning. Charles, we're going to ask a blessing on all Good if all of once again, Father, say thank you, Father, for last another time to be here. Yes, thank you, Father. Really, Father, just want to thank you for this day, Heavenly Father, and all that you gave us that we're guaranteed we'll never see again. Hey, Father, just want you to be with us as we go out through the night. You know what each and every one of us here stands in need of, Heavenly Father. Hey, Father, just want you to be with one of the lost loved ones that this week. Yes, bless the Lord. Lord. That they would visit constantly. Yeah. Just yeah. come yeah. to their hearts, Heavenly Father. Just let them know that, that, that they were home for a reason, Heavenly Father. Something that we can use yes, bless them. Uh, here in this world to, to get other people to uh, open their eyes, not open their eyes, but open their heart, Heavenly Father. Yes. That way they can see what exactly what, what's going on. Yes, bless them. Now, Heavenly Father, just be with us. And like I said, as we go out through this night, bless this offering as we take it up. And in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
sit on the back row. It ain't no joke. I was going on that back row. My grandma told me about that living water all the time. I thought, Grandma, that living water will never get me. That Holy Ghost will never draw me to old fashioned altar. But let me tell you something today. That Holy Ghost has got the same power it had then. It can still draw us to the altars today. It will let it use us. Amen. It will just let the Lord use us tonight. The Holy Ghost will draw us to these altars. I come down here, Robert, didn't know no fancy prayers. Never been in church since I was 35 years old. All I said, Jesus help me. Uh -huh. No fancy prayer. Jesus help me. Right. You know what he done in church? That? <laughs> he helped me. Right. He saved me. Yeah. He delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from alcohol. I've been straight for 24 years this season. It ain't what I've done. It's what the man upstairs done. Yeah. It's what the Almighty, the King of Kings, yeah. and the Lord of Lords, amen. Yeah. King Jesus. King Jesus. Yeah. He said, the Son of Man, come and seek and save that which is lost. Right. And no matter how sorry you are today, right. no matter how low down you are, Jesus can save me. Right. Right. I'm done. Go ahead. I said he must needs go through Samaria. You know what? One day right. he must needs come down here to Calvary Baptist Church. One day he must needs come here. You know what? We've seen people come to this altar. We've seen people get saved right here. You know what the reason for that is? The reason for that's because the Holy Spirit got a hold of them. The reason for that's because the Spirit of God drew them up here to this altar. What did they? What caused that? Amen. Amen.
like our feet call and let them hear. Lord, and not go away. Yes, yes, from here, honestly. Yes, I yes, pray, Father, that you just go with us. Once again, give us the word that you'd have to say. We'll pray and we'll thank you, Father. For we ask it in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. As I was looking at this right here, he said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. If I do anything, I want to tell you the truth tonight. That's right. Man. I want to tell you the truth tonight because <laughs> Jesus Christ went to the cross and he shed every drop of blood that he had that we might go free, that we could have life and have that life more abundantly, that we could have eternal life in his precious blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Right. Right. So the blood had to be shed. And that's what Jesus was talking about here when he said, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. He was talking about his death on the cross. Yeah. He was talking about the day that he would have to go and that he would have to face the, the lonely walk through that valley of that shadow of death. But he had no fear, Brother Robert. He had no fear at all because he knew. He knew that he had God the Father That's right, yeah. right there with him. Yeah, right. And God the Father walked him through yes, that yeah. valley of the shadow of death. And he done that. He said, I have, Jesus said this. He said, I've got the power to lay my life down. He said, no man took my That's life right. from He said, I've got That's the right. power to lay it down. And he yeah. said, I've got the power to raise it back up. Right. And on that third and glorious day, he arose right. from that grave. Yes, and I'm going to tell you tonight, I didn't know what I was going to be preaching up here until Christy sang the song that we've got the power. And I'm going to tell you, we have got the power tonight through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We have got the power through the Spirit of God tonight. What are you talking about? I have the power from the Holy Ghost That's of right. God hey, to stand here and preach you the truth. That's right. I've got the power of God on my life tonight when he moves in and Satan moves out. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's got to move out before that the Lord can move in. That's right. But the one thing about it, Brother Roy, he's going to make Satan get out. Right. He's the one that gives us the liberty that we have to stand and preach the Word of God right. from Sunday to Sunday, from Sunday to Wednesday, from, from right. Wednesday to Sunday. Yeah, that's right. and, and, and he's got the power, and we've got the power. Because the Bible says that we can we can get Satan off of our back. You go to quoting scriptures. That's right. right. Go to quoting scriptures and the Satan and Satan can't stay around you. No. Nope. Satan can't I'm stand on you. Uh -huh. He can't stand on your back when you give him some scripture, Brother Marty. You go to giving him that Jesus loves you and, and for God so loved the world and he got to go. That's right. He's got to go because he can't stand it. And you know why he can't stand it? Because he knows. He knows that he ain't got a prayer. That's right. He yeah. knows that he ain't got a prayer. He 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 fooling a lot of people out here in this world today. He's fooling a whole lot of people. He's got this world painted up That's right. to look pretty. Yeah. He's got sin painted up to look pretty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and he's got our politicians to where the they Got everything to where that it, everything that's good is bad. Right. But everything that's bad is good. Uh -huh. That's the way the politicians have got. That's right. And that's what the world wants to see. Uh -huh. See, the world, they, all they've got their mind on is who's in power. Who's in power? Jesus. And what is going to happen with the economy? But I'm going to tell you. I don't have to worry about the economy because King Jesus right. is going to take me through. Yeah. King Jesus is going to get me and 
take me home. Where I belong, I belong in the Word of God. And I belong in the house of God. The Bible says to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of so much is so much more we see the day approaching. Yes, and the day is going to prove it's yes. approaching fast. Amen. Yes. And he said it's expedient that I go away. Uh oh. Well see, when he went away, when Jesus was crucified, and he was laid in that tomb for three days. And that stone was rolled away. People can't figure how did that stone got all the way. But praise God, the Bible says that the angels, the angels of the Lord came over and they moved that stone. And Jesus got up and he folded his, his clothes and he laid it over. Just like he said, I'll return. I will return. And praise God. One day he's going to return. Right? Bible says over in Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, it said, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And in verse 18 it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captivity, captive and, and recovering of the sight of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. What's he talking about the acceptable year of the Lord? I think he's talking about when he steps out on that cloud. When he steps out there and that old trumpet sounds. I think that's what he's talking about there, Brother Owen. I think that when that trumpet sounds, the Bible says the dead in Christ will be raised first, then those which are alive and remain shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And he said, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. And I know over, over in the book of Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Amen. And the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Uh -huh. Praise God. I'm glad that Jesus loved me. Uh -huh. I'm glad that, like the song says, Jesus loved me. This I know. Amen. Why? Because the Bible tells me. Uh -huh. right. I'm glad that he loved me and that he gave himself for me. I'm glad to know tonight That's that right. Jesus, King Jesus, Yes. went to that cross he and he was crucified and he was buried That's and right. he was re he resurrected on that third and glorious day yes. and he is seated at the right hand of the Father yes. making intercession for those that are called on his precious name. Yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of people, Luke chapter 12, verse 8 and 9, say amen when you get here. Amen. amen. Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before man, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Listen to me, church. We leave these buildings sometimes. We act like we don't even know what a Christian is. It's about time we stand up and tell people we're a Christian. Amen. You know, when you go to the 
You go to the gas station, they give you that big hub cap to hold the key. Well, let me tell you something. If you're a Christian tonight, you're going to have some traits to you. Amen. Right. Hey, if you're a Christian tonight, you ain't going to talk the same. You ain't going to walk the same. You ain't going to smell the same. You're going to be different, brother. Amen. I don't know about a lot of people in this world, but when they get in front of a big crowd, right? I've talked to some of these social crowds. I've been in front of them. You've been in front of them. They want you to hunker down because they got some kind of title. Let me tell you who I, the title I got tonight. I'm this brother Roy. I ain't anything special, but I'm going to preach the word what God called me to do. And, I, and you know, over in Romans, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. If it's ever a time, church, we ought not be ashamed of the gospel. It's the day, amen. We ought to tell people there's a way out, amen. amen. When they up under the bridges, when they're on the highways and byways, amen. We ought to tell these people there's a way out, amen. That's right. That God loves them. That's right. When's the last time we looked at somebody less than fortunate when they ain't got what we got and tell them, hey, Jesus loves you. Let me tell you something tonight. God is love, amen. amen. If you're saved tonight, you got God's love in you, amen. amen. We don't have a spirit up in us. We don't even want to tell people yeah, about right. you. What's wrong with us, church? Right. I want to tell somebody tonight. There's a way out. I want to tell you no matter what you're going through tonight. Jesus has got the answer, amen. amen. It says he'll deny us. You know, when we get in front of people, what would I change? We'll be even bolder. We deny Jesus. Hope no one will find out we're a Christian. Have you ever seen them? Have you ever seen people get in front of people? They hope nobody find out they're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about the best honor in the world. The best thing you can ever get tonight. Thanks be to God. Yeah. For the unspeakable gift, amen. Hey, I'm telling you about salvation tonight. It's the best thing we can ever have, amen. amen. When Jesus saved us, church, I ain't got much. I probably got less than any preacher in here. But I'm going to tell you what I have, God. I got a man who will never leave me. I got a man to stay there with me. I got a man that will help me through any kind of problem in this world. Right. I got a man that loves me when nobody else will love me. Yeah. I got a man that will never turn his back on me. Right, right. You know, some of these so-called friends in this world might turn their back on me. Right, right. They, might, they might bite back. Yeah. They may talk about you back. But let me tell you something. If they ain't talking about you, you ain't doing what God wants you to do. That's right. Do you hear me? That's right. yeah. If they ain't talking about you, you ain't doing what God wants you to do tonight. They don't talk about you when you do right, brother. You know why? Because they want to justify their life. They want to make you look bad because they're life. Let me tell you something now. It's an honor to be known as Christian. Does anybody know the definition of a Christian tonight? A Christian to be Christ-like. Church, this guy down there told us today, people puts God this, God, last, Joey, J O Y. See, I graduated third grade in Spain. There you go, sister. J O Y. Jesus first, other second, and you say a day at last. Amen. Let me tell you how I put it in my mind. When I first got saved, got a little fire up under my butt, and I went out a little country preach, telling people about what Jesus does. You know, we'll still tell people about Amen. what Jesus did. But he, he put a fire up in my butt. I put my family on the back burner for years. I'm just telling you what I've done. I put Jesus first Amen. my whole life. For 24 years, I put the Lord first. Amen. It don't matter. Let me tell you something. We can all come in here and get depressed. Yep. The devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you have life. More abundantly. Amen. I am not going to let nobody steal my joy. Amen. I'm going to come in here and worship the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to come in here and hold up holy hands yeah. and thank Jesus for the done. Amen. Yeah. He could have given up on me a long time ago, Lord. Yeah. He could give up on you. I could be dead. Yeah. I laid in a coma for six months, church. Six months laid in a coma. A light line broke, you see between my eyes, that scar goes all the way down through it. It hit me between the eyes. I showed you the picture one time. I had long, stringy hair. Jesus, give me a haircut. 
That's why I don't walk more because Jesus gave me a haircut. This boy with long hair said, Daddy, will you buy me a car? He said, no, I ain't going to buy you a car till you get a haircut. The boy said, well, Jesus got long hair. He said, Jesus walked too, hey, man. Let me tell you something. You better get a haircut if you got long, straight hair today. That's all I'm telling you. I ain't trying to be mean, but if you're a Christian, you need to be a Christian. Right. We need to stand up. They, they're talking about getting in that water. If there's ever a time, we need to get in the water and tell people what's wrong. Go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. Yes. And tell people that sinning ain't winning. Right. And tell people about holiness. The Bible says without holiness, no man is going to see Jesus. If we don't get back to the, the root of the word here, if we don't get back to the basics and start being holy brothers, there ain't anything wrong with being a holy brother, hey man. There ain't anything wrong with being set aside, not set with the same God. There ain't anything wrong with it, hey man, to love the Lord. That's power. You tell them, sister. You tell them. We deny and we act like we don't know Jesus. Decide not to speak up for what is right. What's the world been today? When you see it, you see these uh, women and these transgenders trying to play sports against each other. Do y'all think that's right? I'm just asking y'all. Let me tell you something. There's two genders here tonight. You either a male or a female. There ain't no in between tonight. There ain't no... Uh, What's that car they had back now? Same as El Camino. El Camino. The El Camino didn't work, and the transgender ain't gonna work either. Hey man, God don't like it. Now the women's decided to sue them because they, they they hurt women and everything else. Let me tell you something. They were two genders. They spent thousands of dollars to see if they more two genders. Right. How stupid can people be? How stupid can they be, church? Oh, brother, well, you can't be preaching like that. I don't want to hear that. I ain't going to apologize either. Are silent about our relationship with God. Blends into society. Boy, they get out here in this society. Me and Robert say, let me tell you, and I'll tell you, Robert, here in a minute. We was in an event one night. Marty was with us. We was in an event down there. We was raising cane about the hemp house. We Christians ain't with church. If it ain't right, we ought to say something about it, shouldn't we? If it ain't right, we ought to be down there telling them it's wrong, ain't it? Amen. So we was raising cane about the hemp house. Boy, these women didn't like it. Yeah, the beard bust they have down here. If you're a Christian, you ain't gonna like that church. Listen to me. We ain't gonna like what's wrong. So we was raising cane, but these people, they was on some kind of little committee down there. So they had to let us walk out the door before they voted and put beer in a precious bed. Put liquor and beer in there. Let me tell you something. Your sins will find you out. Right, man. If you know to do right and you do wrong, it's what? It's sin. That's right. They might get away with it here, but one day it's right. right. When they meet the almighty Amen. Jesus, when they stand and say, every eye, Amen. every beast, Amen. Every tongue shook a face. He is a Lord of Lords. He is a Lamb of Lord. He is a Holy. He is Jehovah. He is Jireh. Amen. Amen. He is a God of Almighty. Amen. He's a Holy God. Right. He's a precious God tonight. Yeah. And He's a, hey, He will judge too. We was over in Jew today and it was talking about Jesus sending people to hell. Do you think Jesus said absolutely? Read, read Jude over there. You see it yourself. That's right. There's a lot of people going to hell on their own free will. That's right. You know why? The way they live. That's right. They said, Brother, well, I got saved. I got saved 25 years ago, but I ain't been to church in 32 years. But I, I got saved. There ain't no evidence in your life you're saved. If you go in the same way the devil is going, you ain't saved. That's right. Brother, you're judging me. No, I ain't judging you. I'm just telling you. If you go in the same way as the devil's going, you ain't safe. That's right. That's hard. I went that way for 35 years. I was on the same track. And I, I was wondering why the devil never did bother me, Martin. You know why the devil never did bother me? Because I was headed to hell. 
As long as he had me, he was going to me. When I got saved, I thought, it's going to be easy. Ooh, was I, wrong? Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought it was going to be easy. Hey, the first thing I was over, I was being real, church. The first thing they ever put me over was a turkeys and ham. Oh, Lord. So somebody stole one. We come up one short. And I believe I had $28 to my name. And I thought we could buy one for $26, so that's going to leave me $2 to pay that. So I went to the deacon. I said, somebody stole one of my hands. He said, brother, are you in charge of that? I said, what's that mean? He said, you'll have to get another one. I went and bought one. Didn't say anything about it. Just went and prayed for a person. Let me tell you something about stealing from the Lord. You can't out steal God. Right. If you need something here, come and ask somebody and God give it to you. Hey, yeah. Don't steal from God's house. Hey, man. I, learned a, I learned a lesson there. So the next day, I had $2 in my name. A boss at work said, Brother, well, I owed you $20 a long time. I didn't forget about stealing. I'm just going to tell you how the Lord works. Oh, yeah. You can't out give God. That's right. right. Amen. When you do right, God's going to give it back to you. Right. Yes. When you do right with a good heart, it don't matter what church people does. It don't matter what so-called church. They, yeah. There's a lot of people go to church that go to heaven. That's right. I ain't trying to bust your bubble tonight. There's a lot of people go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday I ain't going to make a trip. Right. How do you know, Brother Over? The Word says that. That's right. He says, should, Lord, Lord, should I enter in? Ain't I done great things? Ain't I prophesied in our name? Ain't I cast out devil? Ain't I done this? Ain't I done that? He said, I never, listen to these words. I never knew you. Amen. The greatest thing in life we can do is know Jesus. I ain't got much to tell you tonight. But if you don't know this man named Jesus, you can know him tonight. Right. You can, they're talking about the Holy Ghost. they talking about that Holy Ghost fire. A lot of churches wouldn't know the Holy Ghost if it run up and bit them in the bud. Amen. Right. They ain't got no liberty in churches. They come through the door, they give you a program. I ain't a program man. Amen. I'm a Holy Ghost filled preacher tonight. Yeah. I'm going to preach the Word of God. Yeah. I don't care whose feelings I hurt tonight. I'm going to tell you like it is. Yeah. And I believe Jesus was the same way. Yeah. I believe He told people like it was. Yeah. I believe if it was sin, it was sin. Right. Right? They said, Brother Roy, can we shack up today? Nope. Have you ever heard that? That uh, my own show when it hits that thing? We need one of them big bales over here. <laughs> when something's wrong, we can hit it. Get one of these kids to hit it. If it's sin, then, church. No. It's sin today. God says, I've changed now. I'm the same today, tomorrow, and forever. That's That's right. Right. God don't change. You know, we might want to change it around and tell people, oh, you can join the church if you live in the That'll never happen here. Right. I ain't trying to hurt your feelings, but it's never going to happen. I can tell you that right now. It'll never happen here. If it don't line up with this word of God right here, it ain't going to happen, church. Let's see. I'll give you one more. Live godly. This is when we... Do acknowledge him. Live godly, upright, Christ-honored lives. Pick the Lord up out of the crowd. You know, we was down there and boy, them people didn't like us. You know why they didn't like us? Because we stood against what they believed in. They wanted to go on sin and we wanted to go against sin, church. It's time people get a backbone and tell people when something's wrong. If you know to do right and you do right, it's a sin. Right. And your sins will find you out. Yes. Go ahead, Ron. Be sure your sins will find you out. Yes, amen. amen. I will keep you just a minute. I will, while, they were, while, they was, uh, while they was talking about that, I was going to talk to you about it some, over in John. I already had my finger in the Bible where I was going to tell you about how we were, how Jesus told us we were equipped and we're unified and glorified and qualified. But I, while they was talking, I, the Lord said, no, that's not it. Listen, over in, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, everybody knows these verses by heart probably. 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting off verse 1, said, This know also in the last days, 
perilous times will come. I want to tell you this evening, right now is the last days. The last days began when Jesus Christ walked on the earth. The last days began then, and the last days are going on now. I want to tell you tonight, in the, in the, in the last days, perilous times will come. Those times are already here. Yes, All amen. you have to do is look around That's you. Right. All you have to do is turn your radio on. All you have to do is turn your television on. Be out there in the world where it's going on, and I want to tell you, you can really know real quick that perilous times will come. He said, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful, ungodly, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Does that not sound like what's going on out there in the world today? Does that not sound like what's going on in our government today? Does that not sound like what's going on down here in town at the city council? We're always talking about that meeting. That was the city council that we went down there and stood before them and just all but begged them not to let those things go on right here in this town. I'm going to tell you, I don't know about y'all, but I moved to South Pittsburgh because it was a little country town. We didn't have, we don't have to worry about gangs and we don't have to worry about uh, thugs like they do in downtown Chattanooga. I'm glad, praise God, to live in a place where we don't have to deal with that. But I want to tell you, they're trying to move in. The devil wants to move that in. He wants to move that right in here where we're at today. He wants to move right. that alcoholism. He wants yeah. to move that marijuana. He wants to move those drugs. He wants to move all that immorality. He wants to move that right in here where you're at today. I want to tell you, if we don't stand up for what's right, That's right. if we don't start to stand on the Word of God, that the Bible, and over in Romans, Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed right. by the renewing of your mind to what's that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. You know what, praise Lord. God, that tells me we better be standing on what's right. That's right. Whenever they start to talking about doing those things that are immoral, when they start talking about doing those things that are uh, 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 wrong and sinful, we need to stand up and say, wait a minute. Yeah. That's not what the Word of God says. Wait a minute. Yeah. That's not what Jesus wants. Oh, no. You know what? He wants us to not be, like Paul said, to not be conformed to this world. Yeah. Love not the world, nor the things of the world. He that loveth the world hath not the love of the Father. We need to love Jesus Christ supremely. Amen. That's right. Not allow this world to pull us down where they're at. That's what Amen. Lord was talking about a while ago. That's what they want to do. So you know what? Those that are those that are lost out there living in sin. You know what they want to do, Brother David? They want to pull you down a little bit because that lifts them up to your, that makes them feel like they're up on your level. Well, I want to tell you, praise God, it doesn't matter how much they pull you down. They're not going to be any different. They're not going to be lifted up any until they got Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. That's the only way they'll be lifted up. That's right. It's through the shed blood Thank you, of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. I want to tell you tonight, if you don't have that shed blood applied to your life, the Bible said that, the Bible said God made Jesus to be oh, sin for us who knew no sin. <coughs> Lord, we must be made the righteousness of God. I'm glad to know tonight we can have the righteousness. Our righteousness is my righteousness is filthy as filthy rags. It's awful. My righteousness is awful yeah. at the very best. But you know what? We can have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ applied to our life. That's right. We can walk in his righteousness yes. from day to day. And guess what? That's what he wants us to do. Amen. He expects us to do is to walk in his righteousness from day to day. I'm going to tell you tonight, if you don't have that, that blood, if you're not covered in the blood, if, you know, if the blood had not washed your sins away, Steve mentioned a while ago that Jesus shed his blood on that old rugged cross. Well, that blood, one drop, of that precious right. blood had the power to cleanse the world of all of its sin. Amen. Well, you think, well, if it's that powerful, why don't they just do away with all this stuff? Well, because we reject it. That's Mankind it. rejects that blood. Mankind don't accept that. Mankind wants to do things his way, and Jesus has another way. You have to have the blood applied. One drop of that precious blood was yeah. powerful enough to cleanse the world of all of its sin. 
Therefore, the blood washes away the sin. Your sin's gone. As far as the east is from the west, I'm glad to know tonight. If you've got that precious blood applied to your life, you'll spend eternity in glory with Jesus Christ. Come, Brother Marty, with a, with a verse of Psalm. If you're here tonight, and you don't know the Lord, if you've never had the blood applied, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you don't have a relationship with Him, and not just a relationship, but if you don't have a relationship and fellowship with Him, Listen, tonight's the night.